Next, we want to talk about the spectrum of the solar radiation. So what you can see on this uh, figure is the spectrum we get from the sun in, in blue. This slope of the curve represents the spectrum. You see here on the x-axis the wavelength uh, of the photons we get from the sun and on the y-axis the irradiance. So this, the strength of the, the amount of photons. Um, let's have a quick repetition. What, what does it mean? What is the wavelength? So what we have is with the sun sending photons, photons to Earth. So we're here. This is uh, Earth. And uh, the photons uh, are both. They behave like particles and they behave like waves. And what you can define is that they have a wavelength, wavelength, lambda, uh, measured in meters. Uh, what you can, of course, also use is the frequency of the photons or the light, the frequency f and if you multiply f times lambda this is c and c is the speed of the light so this is the speed of the light which is uh, more or less three times 10 to the eighth meters per second so if you know the wavelength you can always calculate the frequency of um, of the photons. Uh, what is also important is uh, the energy of a photo. We'll, we'll use this later on this course. The energy of a photon E, this is H times F. F is the frequency, frequency, and H, this is Planck's constant, Planck constant coming from quantum physics, so I don't want to go into details uh, right now. And H is the value of 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule times second. So a very small volume. Of course, a photon is a quantum particle, and uh, the energy of a photon is rather small. So what you need is always the frequency and what you can, of course, then derive is uh, how does the wavelength influence the energy. So the higher the frequency is, the larger the energy is. And on the other hand, the smaller the wavelength is, the higher the energy is. So if we go back to our figure, you see now the parts of uh, three different parts. You see the visible part, so that's the uh, photon, the wavelength of the photons uh, our eyes can absorb. So um, this is here the high wavelength of 600 to 700. This is red, the red color, and then it's getting to orange, yellow. So the wavelength is getting smaller. The frequency is increasing. Light green and dark green, and then stepping over to blue and finally we get a violet and then the wavelength is more than 400 nanometers this is ultraviolet so that's not invisible for our eyes on the other hand uh, the part with this infrared uh, wavelength above 700 or 750 nanometers uh, that's heat radiation so also heat is uh, electromagnetic radiation, photons uh, emitted and absorbed by a body. Um, but uh, what you can see here that the sun has a wide spectrum beginning from 250 nanometers up to 2500 nanometers. What you can also see here in, in orange, this orange curve, that's the black body curve. So in, and in physics, we talk about the black body if it's in equilibrium um, and has a specific uh, temperature, and then it emits a uh, photon. So that's a uh, um, Stefan Boltzmann law. So 
Walking downwards, so we have this Stefan. Boltzmann. Law, um, which gives information about the power of the radiation of a black body. So a body which is not black, but it's a, uh, in an equilibrium as a constant temperature. And the power emitted uh, depends on the Stefan Boltzmann constant. This is the Stefan Boltzmann. Constant um, and this uh, sigma is five dot seven six times ten to the minus eight watts per square meter and carry into the fourth. Then it depends on the surface of our uh, body and on the temperature to the fourth. So an increase of the temperature. Uh, significantly increases the power uh, of a black body. And what you see here, that's a result of, of all these laws of radiation, I don't want to talk about this uh, right now, is that we get a, not only one frequency, but a wide spectrum. You can see here, depending on the temperature, so what you can do is, if you like, um, is calculate the temperature of the sun. We'll do this uh, later on. Um, so that's a perfect spectrum. You see here the blue curve represents the spectrum of the sun, so a real spectrum with some uh, ripples on it. That's the real spectrum of the of the sun. And then what we can finally have a look at is what is the irradiance or the strength of uh, uh, the sunlight uh, reaching Earth. So again, this uh, this picture, let's redraw it. So we have the sun, this large body and the radiation. Then we have Earth and the distance is about 150 million kilometers from Earth to Sun. Uh, and so what is the power of the radiation of the Sun uh, reaching Earth? So that's the PS, this is the solar constant. So the power uh, per uh, what's you know, measured in watts per square meter and the solar constant PS um, has a value of about 1,361 1, watts per square meter or 1.361 kilowatts per square meter. So that's the power of the sunlight reaching the outer part of Earth's atmosphere. Of course, there's an absorption uh, of the sun, uh, so of the solar radiation by the atmosphere and this sort of constant that's uh, reaching the outer part of Earth's atmosphere. What we now finally can do is uh, estimate how long do we have to collect the uh, solar radiation to fulfill the global annual energy demand. So uh, the energy Earth is consuming uh, in one year. So um, think about, on the one hand, what is the cross-section of Earth so uh, let's get rid of this. And uh, so what is the cross section of our sphere? We have the radius of Earth, Re, that's the radius of the Earth. Re is about uh, more or less 6,371 uh, uh, kilometers. Um, what we have to keep in mind is that, uh, on the other hand, what is the, the sphere uh, of Earth? So this, uh, or the, the area of, of, of the Earth, of our sphere. So the area uh, of our sphere, of, of the Earth, this is uh, 4 p times Re 
squared. On the other hand, what we have is of course this cross section, cross section, which is hit. This is uh, also area P times R E squared. And what is what is the amount or the, the mean power of the solar radiation we get? So of course the Earth is uh, not getting this value here, the solar constant uh, all over the world, because on the back side of Earth it's dark. Um, and of course we have to uh, keep in mind what is the angle of the radiation. So what you can derive from this that we have on the one hand this cross section, so this cross section of this circle and on the other end the overall surface of our sphere of the earth uh, so that we have a factor of one over four or so quarter um, so that the mean the mean power reaching the outer part of the atmosphere it's about uh, 340 watts per Square meter, uh, so one quarter of this uh, of this uh, solar constant here uh, at the top, and you might have seen this value here is uh, these uh, 340 watts per square meter. Um, if you are familiar with with climate change and uh, the energy balance of of, of Earth, what you now finally can do is um, we can estimate what is time scale, so how long do we have to collect the uh, energy we get from the sun to fulfill the global annual energy demand. So um, let's make a quick estimation. Um, so first we need to uh, get to know what is the energy demand. Uh, the energy demand of Earth, this is uh, uh, global energy demand, this is 113 petawatt hours. So that's in the, the annual energy demand. Annual energy demand. Uh, let's use a more appropriate unit. This is 1.13 times 10 to 17th watt hours. So we keep the to this uh, energy unit of watt hours. You will see this. Uh, so we've seen the radius of the Earth is uh, 6,371 kilometers. Um, and if we think about Earth here at the top, we need to know, so what is the surface um, of the Earth, which is uh, receiving the sunlight. So we have the mean power, that's a power, a specific power, so it's a watts per square meter, so we need to know what is the area of the surface. That's, of course, one half of our sphere. Um, so uh, the surface of the Earth receiving the sunlight, that's one half of our uh, surface of so 4P R E squared, so just one half. The other half does not receive anything uh, because it's uh, night on the other side. Um, so, just uh, using all the values, one half times four times p times, and then we have six three seven one million meters squared, and in total, um, this gives us uh, sort of two point five five times ten to the fourteenth. Meters squared, uh, and then we can get uh, the total power. Let's let's call it uh, just p, and p it's the the mean power of this uh, 340 watts per square meter times our surface of so 2.55 times 10 to the 14th meters squared. So what we get is on Earth. Uh, more or less, this is 8.6 times 10 to the 16 watts. So that is the power uh, we get from the, from the sun. So power of the 
solar radiation on the Earth's surface. So it, it's a really large volume. Um, and now what you can do is we can now derive the time because we have here at the top we have the energy, here at the bottom you see the power, so dividing this we get the time t, so it's eg over p, so let's you just use our values, we have t, that's 1.13 times 10 to the 17th, 17th what hours over, and when we divide by this 8.6 times 10 to the 16 watts, and what we get is it's about 1.3 hours. So it's a, well, let's say, not uh, something between one and one hours and then 90 minutes. We have to collect the sunlight. Um, and this energy we get in 1.3 hours from the sun, we just need to collect it, and then we can fulfill the global annual energy demand of Earth. Uh, so you, you see that's a rather short time period. Uh, so the large power or the large energy, the large amount of, of energy we get from the sun, uh, of course, that's a highly simplified because we uh, need to keep in mind that, that there are losses, efficiency issues, etc., etc., absorption of the sunlight uh, in the atmosphere. But you see, it, it makes sense to talk about photovoltaics, to talk about a machine which is able to uh, convert uh, the sunlight to electricity, because that's a huge amount of energy we can use from the sun and transform it to other forms of, of energy we can then use in different ways.